Tonight, Apple CEO Tim Cook has a pretty big personal announcement. Microsoft announces their health platform, and China's Xiaomi is now the third largest smartphone maker in the world. Tech News Tonight is next. This is Twit. This is Tech News Tonight, episode 205, for Thursday, October 30th, 2014. This episode is brought to you by Squarespace, the all-in-one platform that makes it fast and easy to create your own professional website or online portfolio. For a free two-week trial and 10% off, go to squarespace.com and use the offer code TECHNIGHT. Hello, everyone. Happy Thursday. I'm Sarah Lane, and let's get right into today's tech feed. Today, Microsoft joins the health movement. It's quite a health movement. Everybody's doing it with its own long-rumored health platform that includes not only a cloud service, but also a mobile app and a smart wristband. The $199 Microsoft Band is compatible with iOS, Android, and Windows Phone devices. Nice and cross-platform. Those, those were rumored as well. And has 10 smart sensors for all-day heart rate monitoring, calorie burn measurement, and advanced sleep quality tracking, as well as guided workouts curated by Gold's Gym, Shape, Men's Fitness, and Muscle and Fitness. The band also displays incoming calls and emails and texts and social updates, as well as the Cortana personal assistant. At launch, the platform syncs with Up by Jawbone, Map My Fitness, My Fitness Pal, and Runkeeper to store information and then build routines over time. Users can soon opt into connecting Microsoft Health Data to Health Vault in order to share details with medical providers. Well, like them or not, Instagram video ads are officially live with deals in place to show 15-second autoplay spots from Disney, Activision, Lancome, Banana Republic, and CW. The ads will start appearing today, and they'll start rolling out over the coming weeks. Even if you don't see them today, you probably will eventually. Static image ads on Instagram launched last year. In fact, I, I rarely see any of them. But video has obviously become an essential part of mobile advertising, not just on Instagram, which is, of course, owned by Facebook, but also rivals like Tumblr and Snapchat that recently launched their own similar ad products. The targeting of ads on Instagram is still pretty basic at this point, gives marketers the ability to reach people by their age, by their gender, and by their country. All right, if I were to ask you, who are the number one and number two worldwide smartphone vendors? You might say, mm, Samsung and Apple, and you would be right. But who's number three? It used to be LG, but no longer. Data from Stra Strategy Analytics reveals that Chinese handset maker Xiaomi has surpassed both LG and Huawei to become the third largest smartphone maker in the world. Xiaomi has seen pretty large growth as its market share grew to 5.6%. That's about 18 million smartphones shipped in the third quarter, compared to just 5.2 million shipped in the year ago quarter. That's big growth. LG now holds down the fourth spot with 5.2% of global market share. Xiaomi had pretty good success selling entry-level devices in emerging markets like China and India, and the company says it plans to expand its footprint in Asia and Europe. Lenovo officially completed a 2.9 billion deal with Google earlier today, which now makes it the proud owner of... Motorola, that's right. Motorola will, may, will remain a wholly owned subsidiary of Lenovo. Its headquarters will stay in Chicago. Google retains ownership of the bulk of Motorola's patent portfolio, with Lenovo getting license to the patents, although 2,000 of those patents and a large number of patent cross-licensing deals will go with Motorola to Lenovo. Oh, patents. Later on in the show, a new app that tracks how often you look at your phone during the day. The truth is going to hurt people. And up next, I will chat with Mark Millian from Bloomberg about Apple CEO Tim Cook's latest big announcement. And no, it is not about hardware. But first, let's take a moment to thank Squarespace.com, the all-in-one platform that makes it easy to create your own professional website or online portfolio. When I say professional, I really mean it. The stuff looks great. Beautiful design. Squarespace has 25 templates just to get you started, just to give you a sense of, oh, yeah, I, I actually really like the layout of this. I will use this as my template. Now, of course, a template can be doctored up to look uh, as, as as customized as you want it to or, or not at all. It's, it's Squarespace is great for people who like to tinker around behind the scenes, but also really good for people who don't want to do any of that. If you ever run into trouble or you want some help with customization, Squarespace has live chat and email support 24 hours a day, seven days a week. You're always going to get somebody who's willing to help you. And all subscription 
subscription plan levels ha now have the ability to accept donations. It's the e-commerce side of Squarespace. It's built into all of their templates. That's great for nonprofits or, or wedding registries or, or a school fund drive, any reason that you need to collect money in, a, you know, in, a, in an easy way all in one place. Squarespace plans start at $8 per month, and that includes a free domain name if you sign up for a year. You know, I've always hated having to manage my domain name and then and then pay my host. And it, Squarespace does all of that for you in one place. Squarespace has great apps. The Metric app allows you to check your site stats and your page views. The blog app uh, lets you make updates on the go. Hey, you're, you're on the move. Well, you can still add images, change your layouts, and monitor your comments. All of that stuff is available to you with Squarespace. Great apps that look really nice, too. And again, hosting is included. Squarespace takes care of all of that. So you don't have to. You can start a free two-week trial with no credit card required. Just just give yourself two weeks, build that website, and I I I I guarantee you you're going to be amazed with what you can do with very little effort at all. When you decide to sign up, make sure to use the offer code Tech Night. That's T E C H N I G H T. That'll give you 10% off and also lets us know that you're supporting Tech News tonight. Thanks to Squarespace for their support of TN2. A better web awaits you and me and everybody we know. And it starts with our new Squarespace website. Joining us now is Mark Million, tech editor over at Bloomberg. Hello, Mark. Welcome back to the show. Hello. Okay, Thank we're, we're going to talk about something a little different today. Uh, an essay uh, published today on Bloomberg Business Week uh, titled Tim Cook Speaks Up, written by Tim Cook, of course, CEO of Apple. And uh, if you, if you, for whatever reason, have really not paid attention to the news today, uh, you might not know that he officially came out as gay. Now, I've been, I've been interested in in the variety of responses uh, from people. Many of them were sort of scratching their heads, like, "Oh." Did we not know that? Was that not already an official thing? It wasn't. Um, that's true. Uh, yeah, I mean, you had heard whispers about this within Silicon Valley for years. Um, I guess they became more intense as he's come into the spotlight since Jobs had stepped down and then um, um, and then died, unfortunately. Mm -hmm. Um, but cook, you know, cook has really been in the spotlight and this has been one of his, uh, missions from a, um, I guess from a social perspective is that you'll see him at, you know, uh, gay rallies. He's appeared with, um, with employees at, at rallies. He's, um, you know, just uh, last week, I think he made a, a statement at an Alabama um, school saying that the the state needs to do more to advance its uh, you know social services and its um, its embrace of LBGT um, people. And so, you know, he hasn't publicly come out and and said this about himself before. That's new um, that he did in Business Week today. Mm -hmm. But, um, but you know, people had been thinking about it for a long time, I think. Yeah, I'm watching some of the comments in our in our live chat room, and a and, and common one is, well, why do we care? This has nothing to do with business. I mean, I, I suppose you could say the same thing about a politician, although often people really do care. And Apple is not only a, a huge company that makes products that so many people around the world use, but very influential. Uh, and, yeah, you, you, have to, you have to think that Tim Cook is not only... Uh, you know, this, this is a personal decision that he's made, but but really making a statement uh, about the way that companies that have that much power over the technology that people use, you know, what their stance is on the subject of human rights. Yeah, I think Apple for the last several years, this, this has really been a Tim Cook thing too, and it's not just on, on gay issues. I think Apple has come out on many social issues. They were among, not the first, but among the first to disclose their diversity numbers, which you know many, many large companies within Silicon Valley still don't do. And Cook has said publicly a number of times, you know, we want to double down on secrecy in products, but we we also want to open ourselves up more on social issues that matter. Mm -hmm. And, you know, why is this important? Um, I think, you know, the reason that Tim Cook did this and the reason why it is an important thing is this is the most powerful gay man in the world who runs, you know, a company that's valued at half a billion dollars, um, the most valuable company in the world who's saying, 
I'm gay and I'm proud to be gay and it's, you know, you can be gay and be successful and he's, you know, he's a role model now to, to many young men um, who, who might be having troubles and Apple has, was one of the companies that filmed the, um, the campaigns, uh, shooting videos to, that are on YouTube for, for gay people who are having, you know, um, personal issues and it's, you know, like an encouraging campaign. So Apple's been at the forefront of this and this is important because Tim Cook is, is not, you know, hiding the fact that he's gay. He's coming out and he's saying, I'm, I'm gay and proud of it. You know, he also mentioned um, uh, in his post that uh, 29 states or so in the U.S. Uh, have laws where you can be fired for coming out uh, in the way that he actually did. Do you think that... See, Apple CEO Tim Cook making a statement like this. Yes, many people say, okay, fine, whatever. But there there are actual laws in place that affect businesses based on personal orientation. Could this be a tactic to change these laws? Um, sure. I think, you know, Apple and Tim Cook uh, are both, you know, proponents for social equality in any form and, um you know, our equal, the United States is equality for things like gay marriage and for, you know, gay executives. Uh, it's not consistent nationally. And I think that was part of his statements about Alabama being behind. Mm -hmm. um, Tim Cook is obviously, you know, he went to school in Alabama, he grew up in Alabama. Um, and, and so, yeah, I think, you know, he's, he's trying to lead by example and saying, you know, I run this huge, massive company. I'm a gay person. And by the way, although you can be fired in those states, California isn't one of them. So I think Tim's job is okay. <laughs> yeah. Um, but yeah, I think he really is trying to affect change with, with, you know, coming out in such a public way like this. Apple stock didn't tank on the news once this was published. Uh, it, you know, it's, it's, it, it, at least on the surface, you get a lot of people saying, okay, well, let's, let's, let's give this person accolades for doing something that is considered by many to be very brave. On the global scale, though, Apple's 100% a global company and looking to get into some very large specific markets. Do you think this affects the, uh, you know, the, do you think that this, changes the 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 rate of growth in 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 certain global markets where something like this may be more frowned upon um i mean there are certain markets within the united states that are that would frown upon this sure I think. um but i think uh you know apple apple's i guess sort of uh marketing mystique is that it's this cutting edge socially progressive company and so that that in itself doesn't make it that out of the ordinary. But you're right that there are places around the world that are fast growing areas for them. Um, Saudi Arabia and and many areas in the Middle East uh, come to mind where this is a particularly hot button issue. Um, I I can't imagine that the consumers in those areas would let something like the CEO's sexual orientation affect the type of phone that they prefer to carry around with them. But um, it's it's hard to know. This is almost unprecedented for a company, uh, for a CEO of a company this large to, to come out publicly like this. Mark Millian is the tech editor over at Bloomberg and frequent guest here on TN2. Thanks for joining us, Mark. And before you go, remind people where they can keep up with your work. Uh, yeah, check us out. Uh, we talked about the Middle East and technology. Check out Bloomberg.com slash Global Tech, where we cover all the great technology news outside of Silicon Valley. Excellent, Mark. We will see you soon. All right, moving on to some other stories in the, in the tech sphere today. Facebook has... Oh, let's call it 1.35 billion users. Chump change, really. Some of them probably have, oh, I don't know, a question or two about how the social network works. So in the spirit of transparency, CEO Mark Zuckerberg will conduct the first community Q&A on November 6th, that's next week, in an hour-long live-streamed session that is 
looking to answer the public's questions submitted to the Q&A with Zuck Facebook page. Now, Zuckerberg says that the Q&A is themed after a Facebook tradition where every Friday there's a Q&A and the employees can come up to him and, and pretty much ask them anything that they want. People can submit questions in the comments on Zuckerberg's post or like uh, uh, other submissions to vote for the questions that they want answered. It sounds a little bit like how Reddit's Ask Me Anything works as well. So if you've got some burning question for Zuckerberg, get your question in there and then get all your friends to like it. Christian Bale has been tapped to play Steve Jobs in the upcoming biopic Jobs, which is based on Walter Isaacson's uh, uh, biography, Steve Jobs. Uh, the, 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 the film version is written by Aaron Sorkin and will be directed by Danny Boyle. So one of the questions is, we got Christian Bale. Okay, he seems like a good Steve Jobs. I called that, by the way, several weeks ago. Who will be Apple co-founder Steve Wozniak? Variety is reporting that Seth Rogen will fill that role. They're citing anonymous sources, but they're also the ones that originally tapped Christian Bale, too. So they probably have some pretty good sources. Sorkin, who also wrote the successful Facebook drama The Social Network, has previously said that the movie will be divided into three long scenes that each take place backstage before one of Apple's product launches. I can't imagine how that's going to be, but it'll probably be great. Finally, how many times do you do this? How many times are you checking your phone every day? Oh, I have quite a few text messages, actually. I don't know, 10 times? I, I would maybe say 20? An app called Checky, that's C-H-E-C-K-Y, not only shows you a numerical figure of how many occasions you're actually looking at your phone, but also offers you a map that shows you the geographical coordinates of every phone check. I don't know, maybe when you're at that really long stoplight, you're checking your phone way more than you are when you're walking around the corner to the corner store. I don't know. The app says that currently the average person checks their phone around 60 times per day. That's according to its own internal research and public data like user tweets. Checky founder Alex Tu told the HuffPost Live in an interview today, quote, there were a whole bunch of people on Twitter when we launched the app who were very hesitant and even didn't download because they said that they didn't want to know. They were almost in denial, which means that's a real problem then if you don't even want to address the issue. Hey, if you're like me, then there's no issue at all. 60 times a day, it's fine. Let's get it up to 75. And that's it for this edition of Tech News Tonight. You can subscribe to the show at twit.tv slash TN2. You can write us with feedback at TN2 at twit.tv. And don't miss our morning news program, Tech News Today, tomorrow and every weekday at 10 a.m. Pacific, 1 p.m. Eastern. I'm Sarah Lane, and I will see you tomorrow on Tech News Tonight. Thanks for watching. Bandwidth for Tech News Tonight is brought to you by cashfly.com.